Welcome to Rugby Saturday Southwest. I'm your host, Aaron Rivera, and today I'm joined by two aardvarks, Demetrio Cordiel, the uh, head coach, and Matteo Cordiel, the uh, fullback, as well as his son. Guys, how are you doing today? Good. Good about yourself. Sir. I'm quite well. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, folks, the Aardvarks had a big victory this last weekend to help them rise up in the standing. So, Demetrio, uh, what kind of helped you guys get into that uh, victory this weekend? Well, um, it was uh, it was a victory needed, um, well in the making. Um, I took over as head coach last uh, last fall, and so we've been trying to build uh, the program and got a. a a few new youth players, uh, really young players, and um, uh, so our fitness and our um, e experience really showed uh, in this last game. That's excellent. And, uh, Mateo, you see everything kind of from the back sitting there at uh, 15. How's the team looking this year? We're looking stru structurally sound. It's uh, really exciting to see the change that we've kind of gone through in the last uh, year and a half, two years with uh, kind of going from some of the more experienced guys that were looking to kind of phase themselves out and then bringing in this new youth and then getting a good mixture of the, of the two is really exciting. Mm -hmm. I know you've got a uh, few new players coming in. So what are the goals you have for this season? Are we talking a deep playoff run? What are we looking for? Well, um, I, I told them at the end of last season that um, I wouldn't be satisfied with less than an EV they finish uh, at the end of the spring. So, uh, and I'm still, that is still the goal. First and foremost, we have to uh, uh, win out our union, which is, we are in third place right now, which is gonna be a uh, task in itself, but, but uh, an achievable task. Well, there are four games left, so it's gonna be a lot of fun to see how the season ends up. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the starting lineup right now from this last game and uh, talk about some of the players you had. I know the first one to mention is man of the match down there on the uh, wing, Josh Aranda. I know he's a returning player for you guys. Correct. Uh, he's played with various, uh, Josh has been playing for quite a while. I used to play against him when he was uh, uh, a young kid and I was playing for the Aardvarks. Uh, he was playing for UNM, and, uh, which is where he started his, career, his rugby career. And, uh, and then he came on to the Aardvarks, I think, uh, probably about eight, ten years ago, and, um, and was, was uh, playing with, uh, has played with, um, with uh, what's the name of the team? Um, the, Black, the Black Dragons. The Black Dragons. And so he's played with various select teams. His experience is, uh, is, is, is really uh, impressive, and, uh, and his game yesterday was... Uh, on Saturday was was impressive also. Well, uh, not to stray too far from the back line. Uh, also, as we mentioned, your son plays that uh, 15 position. I know for most folks right now, we're looking at a uh, number one. So, Teo, is this the first time you've ever been a prop? Um, well, <laughs> in my professional career, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we um, talking of your sons, Diego, your son plays hook for the team. Talk about that front row, uh, John Nelson at one, Diego at two, and Sean Morris at three. Well, um, John Nelson, because of his coaching um, with, with the high school team, wasn't able actually to, to play in that. Uh, he was selected as a starter on Thursday, and okay. then, and then uh, uh, he wasn't able to uh, fulfill that commitment on Saturday. So I had to bring in Jacob Lynch, which is another 19-year-old um, prop that I have. So in the front row, I had two 19-year-old props and my 21-year-old son at, at Hook. Wow. And so, that is so, a lot of youth. So there's, <laughs> I mean, it's an extremely young player. Uh, Sean Morris uh, at three um, really, really uh, uh, started playing last season. He... Uh, he um, was playing a semi-pro uh, soccer in, in Spain, and he comes down, he has a ranch in Angel Fire, and so there's, there's, uh, there's a lot of youth and a lot of, a lot of growth potential mm -hmm. in our, in our uh, front row. And I understand the uh, back row is gonna be uh, pretty similar with uh, some young players there. I know those are completely new names from what I've seen on the Aardvarks. 
So uh, talk about the back row, back row a little bit, uh, Jerome and Elijah. Uh, that's the second row. Or second row, sorry. Yes. Uh, back row, my so, bad. No, no, no problem. Um, a lot of people, the terminology in rugby is, is a little different, and so a lot of people get that confused. But in the second row, um, Jerome has been, uh, it was a new player a couple of years ago. And now has been. I think he's in his third third year, and uh, and uh, uh, he learned the game late, but is coming on really strong, and he's he's learning the game, technically mm -hmm. sound. You know, my my main thing for for um, for the team as a whole is making sure that we are playing basic, technically sound rugby, and so Elijah is is another one of my 19 year olds. And uh, and he played in high school. So so um, so as did Jacob Lynch, my my front row prop. So, so a little bit more experience. Yeah. Well, uh, Mateo. So you play with three internationals on the Aardvarks. What's it like to play with uh, some players who maybe have a lot more, you know, experience and kind of youth growing up in the game? It, it's cool seeing how comfortable they are with the game and how the the small subtleties and the technicalities within the game. Uh, within their own game, kind of help bring up the the newer guys and the the guys that are still wanting to learn more in the game. It's it's a really cool experience. Excellent. Well, well those players are uh, Dan Jones, Ryan Wilson, and Hedo Prinsloo, all from uh, different countries. I know uh, Dan's from uh, Wales, Wales, and then uh, Hedo's from South Africa, and we got. Um, Ryan. Ryan from Ireland. Ireland. I know he's <coughs> he's new with the team too, correct? Correct. Yeah, he's he he came on uh, three weeks ago actually, and so has been uh, a really good attribute. Um, but as you were saying, um, it's been really good to compliment. You know, both of my boys have been uh, have been you know playing since they were four and five, so so they grew up with the game, mm -hmm. and so having them. Uh, that was the biggest struggle with them growing up playing rugby, is is that is that nobody else learning gap, nobody else is doing you. that, yep. and so they were always the most experienced players, you know, playing. And so in rugby, you are as good as your weakest link. And so 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 they learned really early that they couldn't be prima donnas. Mm -hmm. There are no superstars in rugby, so you have to build your team around you. Well, and so. Um, uh, we're running out of time right now, so how's a good way to get a hold of you, Coach, if you want to maybe join the Aardvarks or look into playing rugby? Well, um, the, you know, there's the, we have a Facebook page, um, uh, Albuquerque Aardvarks, and then um, and you can call me directly. Uh, my, my phone number is 505-250-8005, and, uh, and also we have a web... Uh, um, the ABQ Rugby is our team website. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for joining us. We'll be right back. Stick around. Thank you very much.
it's over. The Bears wait until the seventh to live off this great defense they had today. And they pull it in. The University of New Mexico, a Lobo. Van Favre is going to go deep on first down, and it's cut. Gecko's Bar and Tapas, a proud supporter of ProView Networks. It's been a fan favorite spot for food lovers and sports fans. With not one, but two great locations, including outdoor patio, an atmosphere you won't want to miss. Gecko's, off Academy and in Knob Hill. Visit the Frontier Restaurant. Due to heavy construction on Central, take lead or coal coming north or south. The Frontier Restaurant. Get your Frontier fix on. Altitude Sports Grill is where Albuquerque's sports fans won't miss a game. With locally crafted brews on tap and refreshingly crisp cocktails, Located in Hotel Cascada, Albuquerque residents find a staycation worth staying for. Catching Lobo sports, enjoying a beer on the beach, or wiping out, Hotel Cascada is home to your urban adventure. Affordable guest rooms, no hassle water park parties, and much more. Welcome back to Rugby Saturday Southwest. Now I'm joined by a couple of Atomic sisters, Deanna Anderson and Alyssa Robinson. Ladies, thanks for joining us. Okay. Well, uh, so I guess the first question that many people have are, who are the Atomic Sisters? Um, the Atomic Sisters are a women's club team here in Albuquerque. It's really the only other team other than UNM. Mm -hmm. So we have players that don't go to UNM or don't think that they could play with UNM, so they come to us. How long has the uh, club been practicing? I know there's uh, a few different alumni who are a little bit older as well. Um, this season we've been going for a few weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, we were primarily big in the fall, so spring's a little bit slower for us. So Yeah, except for I hear you're going to uh, Las Vegas for this spring. We are. We're going to go to the Sevens Tournament. It's going to be fun. Yeah, five <laughs> days of rugby. <laughs> It'll be fun. Well, um, so who do you all compete against? Uh, I know you said the fall's your big time of the year. Who do you uh, play against during that time? Normally, it's just um, the colleges around us, like NAU or sometimes El Paso. Um, sometimes Las Cruces. I don't know if they have a team anymore. That's about it. UNM sometimes. A few yeah. scrimmages against UNM, yeah. Mostly tournaments. We go out of town for tournaments, like tens tournaments and seven tournaments. That's about it. Okay. So a lot of uh, then playing a bunch of games in a weekend and then some time off. Yeah. yeah. That's exciting. Well, how long is the, uh, or how much experience do the average sisters have? It really depends. We have players, like myself, I've been playing for seven years. We have players who just started a couple weeks ago. So it's, it really varies. Okay, so do you have so then uh, I guess you don't have to have experience to join the team So no. if you were looking to play rugby you might be able to join the sisters. Yeah, absolutely That's pretty exciting. Well, um, I hear that you all are having a fundraiser coming up as well Yeah, it's on March 25th. It'll be a self-defense class. We're putting on at Teagway Park and it should be pretty fun Teagway Park and help to uh, you know, pay for travel expenses and everything to help keep Albuquerque rugby going, correct? Yes. Well, very exciting. Well, what was your most recent match, ladies? Ooh, in December, okay. we went to yeah. Scottsdale. Scottsdale, who'd you play out there? A bunch of teams we played against. We played actually with NAU, we combined with them. So we played um, a team from Chicago, um, teams from I want to say Denver. There was just a bunch of different teams that we played against. Okay. So a lot of fun for the tournaments. Yes. 
Well, um, so what do you have upcoming uh, other than the Sevens tournament? Is there any other plans for the spring? We have a game on at the end of March against UNM at Johnson Field. And at the beginning of April, first week of April, we'll be traveling to NAU to play them. Okay. And you have a few Lobo alumni on the team. I know at least uh, the scrum half and then uh, Hannah as well. Okay. And you as well. <laughs> but uh, do you get a little bit more excitement when you get to play against them, try right. and level yourself to what the team is now? There's definitely a competitive yeah. nature when it comes to UNM and the sisters. I think they're probably one of our rivals. Yeah. Biggest <laughs> rivals. Say, yeah. Well, it's fun that the rivalry will get to keep going. Uh, so when do you ladies practice, and what's the best way to uh, get a hold of you? Um, we practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays at Johnson Field. Um, mm -hmm. Practice starts at 6, goes until like 7.30, 8 o'clock. And we have a Facebook page, uh, Atomic Sisters Women's Rugby. Bowl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the toughest way. Is, it any, is there any uh, kind of logistical problems that you all have? Uh, being, you know, the only women's team outside of like UNM here in the state? It's definitely hard to find teams that want to play us. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's about it. Do you always have to do the traveling to them or does anybody ever come down to play against you ladies? Um, usually it's like back and forth. So this year we'll be traveling more because they came to us last year. Okay. What kind of players do you look for? Uh, you know, we're talking about who would want to come join the team. Is there a certain type of player that you look for? Or? Just, if you're athletic and you want to try it out, like there's no, there's really no requirements, just mm -hmm. as long as you're willing to be hardworking. I mean, rugby is a pretty demanding sport. Yeah. It's kind of not for the weak, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it always seems uh, not as bad until you get your first uh, hit. Yes. <laughs> the first time that somebody tackles you, that's where you find out. Well, um, what's your uh, strengths right now as a team? I think we have a pretty good back line. Yeah, our back line is good. Able to uh, send the ball out wide. What about uh, the forward pack? Because I know that's one of the tougher positions in women's uh, rugby to really fill in. Um, well, our props have been playing for a few seasons now, but we have like brand new locks coming in. So if we do get a full 15s game, it's going to mm -hmm. be a little bit different there. I know pretty much like all of us girls who have played before can play any position. So if need mm -hmm. be, then backs can go as forwards and vice versa. Okay. Do you ever swap around throughout the game just to kind of, you know, have fun with it? Yeah. You know, yeah. One minute play a wing, lot. the next minute run up to the flank or something? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've done that a few times. I've gone from inside center to flank or to hook. <laughs> so. It kind of depends on the other team yeah. sometimes, like their strengths. Okay. Well, thank you ladies so much for uh, joining us. Uh, again, what's the best way to contact you if somebody were interested to play? I would say the Atomic Sisters Women's Rugby on Facebook was probably the best one. Okay. Absolutely. Well, thank you ladies so much for uh, coming on. Uh, Alyssa Robinson and Deanna Anderson. Stick around. We'll have uh, a little bit more talk about rugby in just a moment. Want to eat at a great New Mexico restaurant? Then go to DineNM.com and get a true New Mexico dining experience. We're dedicated to promoting New Mexico-owned restaurants. We advertise restaurant specials, events, and deals all in one place. No need to sign up, sign in, or print out a coupon. Just show your smartphone to your waiter. It's free and easy to use, so find a new special place and enjoy New Mexico's fabulous restaurants. Download the app and visit us online at DineNM.com today. Sinners and Saints, a proud sponsor of ProView Sports and New Mexico Youth Athletics. Start your evening off right with a delicious menu selection like the Sinners Smothered Fries with pulled pork and green chili. Always prepared with fresh, never frozen ingredients. Catch all the sports action from college pros and MMA on one of our 35 HD TVs. Sinners and Saints, the friendliest sports bar in Albuquerque. The Barley Bowl, proud sponsor of ProView Networks for over nine years, is pleased to introduce Black Iron Catering. From weddings and family reunions to birthdays and office parties, Black Iron Catering is perfect for any event. Contact Jamie at 505-459-8259 and book your event today. Black Iron Catering, let us bring our kitchen to you. 
Terry Cosper Insurance Agency is a proud partner with ProView Networks and a proud supporter of New Mexico high school athletics. Terry has been a local farmer's agent for over 20 years for auto, home, life, and business insurance. Just like high school sports are important, so are teen drivers. For more information, call Terry or one of his licensed staff members at 898-5556. Quotes are available for you. Graphic Connection is your source for quality custom sports apparel inspired by the athletes that wear it. Graphic Connection offers in-house graphics, embroidery, digital printing, and screen printing, enabling us to offer custom products with fast turnaround to suit both your budget and your timeline. Graphic Connection is New Mexico's exclusive Cornette digital garment printer shop. The print resolution is unparalleled. Contact Graphic Connection today at 505-821-2777 or visit us online at www.gcsportswear.com. Welcome back to Rugby Saturday Southwest. Now we're joined by the whole crew. We've got Demetrio, Diana, and uh, or Diana and Mateo. And uh, folks, uh, some sad news. We've talked about Jillian Potter on the show before. Uh, unfortunately, her cancer has come back. Um, her and her wife do have a campaign going to try and help uh, fund the treatment. So we're going to have uh, at the bottom of the, scr the screen somewhere you can go to find out a little bit more about it. And uh, she's definitely been integral for New Mexico uh, rugby, one of the you know, highlights for people when they talk about rugby in town, uh, big player. But we're uh, now going to move on to some highlights from this last weekend. Uh, the first game that we have is going to be with the Aardvarks. So, Demetrio, you're especially going to like this one because you're all over it. <laughs> Great shot of you. So what's happening right here? Well, uh, I don't know. I think it's a line out. Yes. It's a uh, scrum, 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 scrum down. Scrum down. down. That's, um, um, you know, I mean, it's the way for the for a lot of people don't know that don't know the game. It's a way to restart after a penalty or um, or um, forward pass. Any any yeah. any, any yeah. infraction, a penalty or an infraction. Um, Looks like it was a horny toad scrum down. Yeah, yes. and it was a defensive one for you guys, right? Poor, uh, luckily for them, they were able to get the ball back out since you're uh, breathing right down their throat there. Right. <laughs> well, I'm I'm normally a quiet person, but <laughs> during the game, during the game, I think I get a little passionate. <laughs> well, we also have uh, a look at a game with uh, Cibola as well. This is a uh, lineup all right here with. Uh, some interesting play that comes down. <laughs> Kick, the block. So it looks like it becomes an offside situation and then an obstruction from Cibola. Oh, yeah. Didn't know where to go with the ball, so he's just trying to... So that's... Himself. Trying to make a gap. <laughs> so passing, uh, kicking in that situation is normally discouraged. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly frowned upon. Well, here's one that's a little bit better off for Cibola as we uh, see them send it out to the line. Oh, that, that distribution is very good. <clears throat> um, John Nelson has done a strides with this team. It's, it's awesome to see how far they've come. Ooh, a little uh, duck out right there, too. Got that little spin move. Well, when I was in high school, Cibola <coughs> definitely didn't have a rugby team, so no, it's no uh, good to see them playing so well, too. Exactly. Yes. Here's yes. the uh, kick in. You know, with a lot of New Mexico rugby, we seem to have this sort of problem where the kicking game's just not quite there yet. Yeah, you, you know, at this at that level right now, it, it's so hit and miss. You know, I, I quite literally, I my my <laughs> have kids from Los Alamos that that play that have been playing for a little while now for four or five years, and then some that are brand new and and uh, so it you know it's it's really hit and miss on at the high school level. Well, this is going to be a uh, look at the. Highland Vatos and UNM playing. This one is a, a little turnover ball where UNM first gets the ball and then the Vatos uh, steal the ball back. Well, this is the the New Mexico Highlands, the Vatos. Uh, this is their version, uh, the 15th version uh, of their game. Um, a lot of people may may not know, but they just won a national championship in sevens. Their mm -hmm. second in a row, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the repeat. <coughs> Uh, national champions and sevens for a small college. Well, here's UNM getting a uh, mark of their own with a quick try straight out of the uh, pick and go. 
So what was your favorite play from the uh, week that we saw today? Um, kind of seeing UNM, they've been working on building their game back up and seeing them having a, a good game against the Vatos was definitely good to see. That final try by uh, Raiden Ruiz was, was a fun one to watch live and good to see it again. <laughs> of course, of course my, my favorite was, uh, was the Aardvark game. Um, <laughs> seeing yourself. Seeing, well, seeing how, <laughs> not, how not the kids, or anything. seeing how the kids have improved and, and how we're really moving, taking big strides forward to, to our goals. Yep. My favorite would actually be the Cibola team. I helped John Nelson coach those boys, so that was a pretty rough game for them. Both teams were getting in each other's faces, so <laughs> oh, say, wow. with the brand new ref. So me being referee, I had to actually help step in in that game. So, so who was uh, the opponent for Siebel in that one? It was Cathedral. Cathedral. Oh wow! So they traveled all the way up. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, uh, so what do you guys look for uh, in the coming four games? So I know the Barks. You got four more games left on the schedule. Most of them are here in Albuquerque. What are we looking for coming up? Well, um, I'm looking to to improve on on uh, on our stand of uh, this weekend. You know, we've only been practicing for three, a little over three weeks, and so, and so, uh, I'm looking to continue to improve on our fitness and our on on, our, on and our experience. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know, we got a little bit more time. Uh, what's everybody's favorite part about playing rugby, coaching rugby, refing rugby? What's your favorite part? Well, I've only been doing it for 32 years, so um, <laughs> you're a little so new to it. I've got I've got a lot of favorite parts. But the biggest thing about rugby is, is the fact that, that the game itself, it's impossible to be a, a good, uh, a, a great rugby player and, uh, and a bad person. So it really mm -hmm. gives you the commitment that it takes to play the game is really, is really good. It mm -hmm. really is like a team sport. You need everybody to work together in order to be a good team. Mm -hmm. And then just that camaraderie on either side of the ball, on and off the pitch. Because you got to have that mutual respect at any point in the game because the second you think you're better than the game is when it comes back and kind of bites you in the butt and kind of mm -hmm. humbles yeah. you a little bit. Well, I've always loved especially that, that, you know, after a hard-fought game, the hitting, all the fighting at the end, you always come together as friends, sometimes, uh, you know, socials and things like that. Yep. To, bring all the players together. Well, thank you all so much for uh, joining us today. It was nice to have you on the show. Thanks for having us. Thank yeah, you very thank much. You. And folks, thanks for joining us here at Rugby Saturday Southwest. You have a good day. Thank you.